What is up YouTube? We are here today with another video talking about a tool that you can use for improving your gameplay and specifically uh, improving your Bank of Exile uh, gameplay. So improving your trading ability and getting a glimpse at the uh, really the economic landscape of a particular league in Path of Exile. So today's tool is called poe.ninja. If you're unfamiliar with this tool, you can simply type into your browser uh, poe.ninja and then hit go and you're going to pull up this website. So what is this website? Well, it's an economic overview of various leagues that are going on in Path of Exile. So you can see right here from the main page, you can select the league that you are in whether that's incursion, hardcore incursion, standard or hardcore. If uh, you're obviously, you know, in the future and this is after the incursion league, then these will be the two challenge leagues, the soft core and the hardcore version of the league. Uh, Starbucks, uh, one of our G3 family members actually sent us this website. I believe it was back in Harbinger League that he found it and it was just such a great find. So let's take a look at some of the different features of PoE Ninja. First off, you can take a glimpse at what the currency market looks like. So if you're interested in flipping currency or if you're interested in trading currency and you want to know what the ratios are and you want to know what the trend is, you can see here it starts from the very top most, the most pricey items which of course in Path of Exile is Mirror of Calandra, as well as Mirror Shards, then Blessing of Chayula, then Exalted Orbs. So right now we are looking in the Incursion League. You can see that in the top right hand side of the screen, the league that you are looking at. And then you can simply go down and see what are the pricier and what are the cheaper forms of currency in Path of Exile. So this is a great way to be able to look at your own stash and to see exactly how much currency you've got. And then a rough estimate or a rough value of what it's trading at. Now you'll notice that there's a buy column and a sell column. This is going to tell you if you're selling the currency, what it's evaluated at uh, roughly on average. And then if you're buying the currency, this is what it is uh, roughly on average trading at. Now, one just quick critique of PoE Ninja, just as with, with everything with PoE, everything runs off of the API. So if the API is behind or slow, then PoE Ninja is going to be a little bit behind or slow. So what I use PoE Ninja for, especially on currency, is looking at a 24-hour period of uh, the trends of what's going on with currency. So rather than looking immediately and saying, hey, what's the market doing right now this hour? Because uh, sometimes it's not going to be accurate. Sometimes you're going to look at say exalted orbs and see what they're trading at and then you'll actually go to the poe trade website and try and buy exalted orbs for a price and you'll notice hey these don't quite match up these don't quite match up in their listing the reason for that is simply a delay in the api so that's it's not a problem with poe ninja it doesn't mean that it's inaccurate it just means that there's a slight delay so you need to take uh, that into consideration as you're looking at these prices so one of the great things that you can do because you can simply compare the present league with uh, standard league one of the things that you can do on PoE Ninja is you can see what the trends are going to be since everything in Path of Exile eventually ends up from a challenge league going into standard you can see the general trend of whether or not a currency is going to go up in value or down in value and you can simply switch between incursion to standard so for instance let's take a look really quick divines right now in standard are going for 27 chaos per okay between 25 to 27 is what they're going for that's what they're selling and that's what they're being bought at Okay. Then when we swip, flip back to Incursion, you can look and see, all right, Divines are being sold and bought at 12 to 12. So probably 12 to 11 or 11 to 13 uh, is probably what that actual ratio is. So that means that when everything migrates to Standard, if it's going to be at evaluated at 27 chaos per, that means that Divine Orbs have actually a long way to go up in their market in terms of value. So if you buy a bunch of Divine Orbs right now and then you sell them over the next 24 hours to 48 hours, their value is probably going to go up. So you can buy them at 12 and then let's say over the next 24 hours that it jumps the market price jumps up to 13 or 14 but looking at your current challenge league and then comparing it using poe ninja to standard league is one good indicator of whether or not currency is going up or going down it was really really interesting at the end of bestiary league uh exalts were actually more valued in the uh challenge league than they were 
uh, in Standard League. That was really fascinating to see. That was the first time that I've ever uh, noticed uh, a league price actually go above what Standard was, and then obviously it corrected. But it was really interesting because a bunch of people that got into the Exalt market and then wanted to play in Standard uh, actually were losing money because of the evaluation of it because it was going to drop down in value once it went over into Standard in the last two or three days of the league. All right, so you can look at currency. You can look at fragments. So let's say, for instance, you want to run Uber at Ziri, or let's say, for instance, you want to run Shaper, or let's say you've got uh, the Pale Council you want to knock out, or you've got Breach Stones that you'd like to purchase and knock out. <clears throat> All of those are available here. You can also check prices of essences. Essences are incredibly valuable, can be incredibly valuable. You can see an Essence of Horror right here is trading for 42 chaos on average, and then there's a drop from 42 chaos down to 19 chaos. It's still quite considerable in terms of the amount of, of value that you can get out of these essences. So uh, if you've got essences, make sure that you're upgrading them and then selling them off. All right, divination cards is the next category, which is great if you're looking to farm a particular divination card in a particular map or you're building up a map pool in order to farm a particular divination card. You always want to check here uh, to see what the prices of those cards are valued at and whether or not it's worth your time to do it. So for instance, I sold a bunch of burial chambers maps the other day because a lot of people want to farm the doctor the doctor can can drop inside burial chambers. Now, I personally am not going to farm my headhunter that way by farming burial chambers. I can't stand the layout. For whatever reason, I just don't enjoy that map. Uh, it's not fun. Even if once every 300 maps or so, the doctor drops, I'm just not going to have fun doing that. I'm going to have fun doing other maps uh, instead. So the divination card uh, site uh, of part of PoE Ninja is a wonderful spot just to go and check, hey, I found this divination card. What's its average value at? And then also to check and see what sort of maps you'd like to run if you'd like to farm divination cards. Jumping over to prophecies, yes, prophecies can be worth quite a bunch. Uh, not every prophecy that Navali is going to give you is going to be a 1C pile of junk. There are actually some incredibly rare uh, prophecies that you can get and you can seal them up and sell them on the market. So as you're looking here, you can see a vision of ice and fire uh, is worth, wow, it's gone up quite a bit, 420%, haha, <laughs> 420 memes insert here uh, but it's gone up quite a bit it's up to 55 chaos right now on average trading and that one gives you uh, the sumter the twisted while holding a heat shiver Ooh, fun all right so you can check out prophecies and their prices here skill gems one of the great things that all of you, uh, all of us that are exiles should be doing is leveling up in our additional open sockets uh, extra skill gems. So if you've got an extra red socket, you should be leveling up in Empower. If you've got an extra green socket, you should be leveling up a Vol Blade, Blade Vortex um, and Enlightened Support and Enhanced Support. Like you can just go here and go, hey, I've got extra sockets. What, uh, what gems are the most in demand right now in the league? presently uh, and then sell those off. Now, you'll notice a lot of these, their levels are level 21 because they're corrupted. And so you've got to get it to level 20, obviously, first, and then you've got to get lucky on the corruption. So it's just another way where if you've got extra slots in your build or if you've got extra slots in your offhands, uh, you can always be leveling up a gem and then hope that you get lucky with a Vol Orb and then sell it and flip it. Uh, and you can make 400 chaos for just playing the game as it is and you just threw in an extra uh, gem, which is great. Okay, Helm Enchantments. Uh, this is a new section that they've just put in this league uh, in PoE Ninja. It's great. It goes through and it checks the enchantment price on average uh, from the uh, different labyrinths. So the various different enchantments that you can get from killing Azaro and from using his enchantment font. These are the different prices that you can get. So for instance, if you want to build an Uber Lab Farmer and you really want to make bank, <clears throat> you can look and see that these three, these first three uh, enchantments are worth over 400 chaos if, if they're added on to an item. So you look and you see, hey, what am I actually going for here? What's my goal here? Uh, now, again, this is randomized and you see that it drops off pretty considerably from 500 down to 87 in less than 10 different enchants. So it's pretty rare to get those enchants that are great. But... You can look and see, hey, if you're running, you know, uh, Labyrinth, it, it, it's a moneymaker on its own simply because of the treasure chests and the amount of drops that you get from killing Azaro. And then it's just a bonus if you hit one of these great fonts. I mean, some of these are, are wonderful. 30% reduced earthquake duration. That's worth 48 chaos. I mean, there's a bunch of these that even if they're not worth hundreds of chaos, they're still worth dozens of chaos, which is great. You can also check what the prices are for unique maps. 
as you'll notice, Brandis Manor is on here. That's almost always one of the most expensive. Um, the Beachhead, that's almost always the most expensive. Poor Joys is always up there because people like to run Poor Joys Asylum for the XP uh, on Rotas. But if you find a unique map and you want to sell it, you can check the price here really quickly. Then you've got maps just in general. So if you want to check what the uh, economic landscape looks like of particular maps and you're wondering, hey, which maps should I shape or hey, which maps should I prioritize? This is actually a really great way to do it not just for yourself to see what's the most valuable, but if you want to build up a pool and then sell it, like for instance, what I did with burial chambers, this is a great way to do that, where I found a couple of people that were looking to farm doctor cards uh, and simply sold them burial chambers and bulks and made a bunch of profit um, without having to run a map that I didn't want to run anyway. Unique jewels, you can check out the prices here. You'll see that there are some that are worth a ton, like the Green Dream, uh, valued at 238 chaos, Lion's Eye Fall, which is valued at 130, and then there's a pretty uh, steep drop off. But you'll notice as you're looking, uh, jewels drop throughout the game. Like, they just drop as you're mapping. It's just a natural thing that's going to happen. So if you're looking through your currency uh, or your dump stash tab after you come out of maps and you go, huh, I wonder what this is worth, you can always check it here on POE Ninja. It's a wonderful one-stop shop. Unique flasks as well. Dying Sun, Xerfies, and Soul Ripper, uh, Taste of Hate are all up there costing more than Exalt. Uh, they pretty much all always cost more than an exalt every single league um dying sun especially it's a awesome it's an awesome extremely rare drop from uh the shaper but you can see here just what the average price is and for a lot of different builds out there and for a lot of players following build guides if you're wondering hey what's the cost of my build and what's the general cost of flasks and getting good flasks for my build you can see right here depending on the flask like a lot of builds use lion's roar right that's five chaos right now so if you're going, oh no, what am I going to do for this unique flask? It's a unique flask. It must cost so much. No, it really doesn't. Lions were five, five chaos. Ed Zeri's Promise is another one that a lot of attack based builds use. It's going two chaos right now. Um, so this is just a wonderful site again to drop in really quickly and get a picture of the economic view of the landscape of the league. You can check out unique weapons here. United in Dream is one of the top ones, uh, although it is trending down presently at 15%. Star Forge, Edzeri's Disfavor is always up there. Edzeri's Disfavor was one of the first uh, big flips that uh, we ever did in the G3 Guild uh, in the G3 family because we were just combining divination cards. We found out uh, that the divination card for Edzeri's Axe, which you can filter here, it's called, uh, oh goodness, what is it, Disfavor? Uh, is it called the last one standing? I think yeah, there we go. The last one standing gets you an Ed series disfavor. So we found out that it was trading at a price that basically, when you compared the cost of purchasing all ten stacks of cards, that it was a very very profitable flip to turn into Ed series disfavor. Because like we were we were buying them at like I think it was like three eighty was the total cost in chaos, and then we were selling Ed series disfavor for like four twenty or four thirty, um, which was great. It was really really fun, and then we were adding on a five link to it um, with the jeweler's touch prophecy which gave it like another 40 to 50 chaos value uh, on there anyway so we use the poe ninja in order to calculate all of that and figure out hey what's the average prices on all of these and then of course we we double checked it with uh with poe trade to actually see what the mo market price was live but again, we never would have been able to do that unless we would have seen what the POE Ninja, what the general trends of the league and of the economy were doing. You can also do the same thing for unique armors. You can see that Edziri's uh, Reflection, this is a, in my opinion, this is a terrible item. Like it's not a great item. There are only very specific builds that will use it, but because of its rarity, it is worth 52 exalts presently. Unique accessories, you can also check. Obviously here's where the Headhunter is at, as well as the Xerfi's Heart and the Zoff's Blood as well as the famed Bisco's Collar that everybody always wants every single league. Right now it's only 3x. 3.3x uh, is what it's average trading. Then you can see some stats for the league, which are great. It tells you your stash ID. And then there's some other additional uh, info about data dumps. And then you can actually check out builds on PoE Ninja, which is awesome. You can actually see what items are the top used items uh, across a league. And then you can also take a look at the top skills that are being used in a league. And you can just look and see right here. This is one of the reasons why Vol Blade Vortex right now is trading so high on the market because so many different people want to use Blade Vortex. Uh, BV Elementalist Witches, I'm just seeing them all over. Whenever I'm mapping or opening up maps for party play, I'm seeing tons and tons of Elementalists. If you want to look at the Passive Tree Heat Map, 
This is a really cool feature. It shows you, hey, where are people mostly playing? And it looks like this league, people are mostly playing up and around the Witch and the Templar. Um, some folks are playing over here near the Shadow, which, of course, that's going to be your Trapper builds. Uh, up here, these are all your Summoners and your Elementalists and your Occultist builds, so your Supports builds. Um, then over here, you've got your Righteous Fire guys. Marauder, you've got your Righteous Fire guys. That Life Gluster, notice the Life Gluster is always a heat map. And you see the Trapper buffs over here on the Passive Tree are... are lit up this league because everybody's playing Trapper. Duelist down here. Man, Duelist is probably going to get a buff next league. Well, they were they were pretty strong in Bestiary, um, so maybe not. Anyway, this is a great way to see, hey, what are the builds that are people playing in general uh, and what types of builds may be impacting the league uh, economy and uh, how you can tailor your trades, your mapping, and your gameplay uh, in order to increase your chances of uh, improving your own currency. You can see up here at the very top, there's actually a percentage of number of players playing. You can see Elementalist is the top played uh, Ascendancy right now, even above Saboteur, even above with all of the trapping buffs that were made. Uh, Blade Vortex Elementalist is still more popular than Saboteur. Then there's uh, Deadeye at 9%, Hierophant at 9%, Ascendant at 7%, Juggernaut at 7%, Champion at 6%, etc. so on and so forth. So there you go. That's POE Ninja. It's a wonderful tool. Hopefully, uh, it's a resource that you will be able to use. I'm going to link it down in the description. And as always... If you've got a question or a comment, you can leave us one down below. Feel free to subscribe for more POE tools and POE content daily right here on the G3 channel.